you know, when God gives you a message, you want that message to turn it into impact and touch the lives of the people that God had in mind when he gave you that message. Welcome to Navigation and Discovery with Cameron Singh. On today's podcast, we have Martijn Van Tilborg. Martijn Van Tilborg, he is an awesome friend of mine and his company really helped me publish and package the message Navigation and Discovery, a path of navigating and discovering through your journey of faith. So they were the group called Four Rivers Media that helped really uh, with author coaching, doing the editing, uh, walking me through the process all the way through putting it out on the market and I'm actually working with them wrapping up my second book which hopefully is going to come out this winter and so to tell you a little bit about who Martine is uh, Martine is a strategic marketing architect and consultant for numerous large organizations and well-known individuals he's also a minister author and speaker as well as a successful entrepreneur Martine's passion to innovate and see God's plan unfold in people's lives inspired him to create several successful companies, including Four Rivers Media, Kudu Publishing, Dream Releaser Enterprises, Avail, and Inspire Collective. He was born and raised in the Netherlands, and today Martine lives in Orlando, Florida with his wife Amy and their three children. So what we're going to be talking about on this episode is Unleashed how to turn your message into impact. And this is based on one of Martine's books that he that he wrote himself on how to turn your message into impact. So we take a deep dive into many of the lessons and concepts that he talks about in this book, marketing, advertising, how to package your message. And it is an amazing book I, that I've read uh, probably about three or four times by now. So you're going to enjoy this amazing conversation that we have with Martine and it hopefully will encourage you to put out your message because one of the things that I believe in and Martine says in his book is each and every person has a unique message and it's truly up to you on what you want to do with that message and make that into impact. So that's what you're going to learn on today's podcast episode with Martine. Well, Martin, thank you so much for being on the podcast and thank you so much for all the work that you and your team have done uh, to, to help me package my message. Well, the pleasure is mine, Cameron. It's always good to spend time with you. How are you? Pretty good. Um, yeah, it's been a, a joy really getting to know you really over the last few years and, and your team. So it's it's uh, been a real journey getting to know you and Avail and Four Rivers Media. Yeah, well, it's the... We've we've enjoyed working with you. You know, we you're the the poster child of why we do what we do. We talk about <laughs> you a lot in the office. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun, and um, you, you know, I want to really touch on um, your why and what you do and Four Rivers Media. And I know we'll go into more about the specifics that that uh, you're involved with, but. I really want to talk about your book here um, that I have that you wrote. And I've read this book, I, I think, three times. And I actually wow. read it again last night because, you know, there's a lot of content in this book. And I feel like you hit the nail. Uh, you touched on a lot of topics that yeah. I think often it's overlooked or, or people make mistakes when they're talking about the message or branding or packaging marketing, advertising, you touched on a lot of excellent topics in this. Um, so I wanted to kind of start off by, you know, what was the heart of your book, uh, your book Unleashed, how to turn your message into impact? Yeah, so um, Unleashed was really the result of me being in this media world for, you know, almost a decade. And I had learned a few things, not because I went to school for it, uh, the only school I ever went to is the school of hard knocks. So I, <laughs> I learned through trial and error, um, you know, and YouTube, of course, you know, you, yeah. you, you look up stuff when you have a question, see if anybody else has something to say about it and you try stuff and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And uh, I looked back on my career at one day and decided, you know what, I'm going to take everything I learned over the last decade, put it in a book format. And hopefully it will help a lot of people turn their message into impact. 
And, um, you know, when God gives you a message, you want that message to turn it into impact and touch the lives of the people that God had in mind when he gave you that message. And that's really uh, what I'm trying to accomplish. So many people, they walk around with a message inside of them, and it only comes out when people ask them a question. And I call that bad stewardship, right? There's so much more that you can do proactively to reach more people more effectively, leaving a deeper impact. But then on the flip side of that same coin, create an economy that sustains the mission that God had in mind when he gave you that message. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, my hopes were and are that a lot of people who have something to say that is of value to others, that um, it helps them do that more effectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, one thing you mentioned was stewardship. And that's, that's actually how you start off the book. Uh, yes. After sharing your story, it's all about stewardship. So what, what, does, what does stewardship mean? To you. Yeah, stewardship clearly comes from, from the parable that Jesus talks about when he gives different talents to different people. One gets one, the other guy gets a little bit more, and the other guy gets even more. And on the surface, it seems like unfair, right? Some get a lot to work with, others get very little to work with. Um, but this book is all about, it's not about what you got, it's what you do, what you have. Mm. And even though you may be only given one talent, uh, that talent is enough to turn it into two talents, to four talents, into eight talents. And even take the talents of the guy that doesn't do anything with his, right? That's what the Bible teaches us. So uh, stewardship is to multiply the impact of what we've been given. And um, so when God gives you a message, he gives you a gift and you steward it well, it will multiply, which then has two areas of impact. Like I just mentioned, you reach more people more effectively, leaving a deeper impact. And that's the missional aspect of good stewardship. The economic impact of good stewardship is that you're able to generate revenues that sustains the message that uh, the mission that God has had in mind when he gave you that message. So stewardship is all about managing effectively the gift and the message that God has given you so you can multiply the impact both missionally and economic. So that that's that. Oh, that's awesome. And in the book, you go extensively into the seven steps of bringing your message, um, bringing your message to market. And, you know, I don't want to go through all of them because of course people need to grab a copy yeah. of it and they need to gift it to other people once they really receive the message of this book. The first thing I, I wanted to touch on is that is identifying the message, because I think this is one that I know many have challenged with is, you know, they have so many ideas on this is my message, this is my message, but I also want to talk about this and that and this. Yeah. Um, how does one begin to identify their message? Yeah, if you don't know what your message is, it's hard to package that message into formats and yeah. turn it into products, right? I work a lot with pastors. And, and many times when you work with pastors, uh, I struggle to identify what is your lane. I call them the jack of all, all trades when it comes to message. <laughs> you know, before you know it, you blink your eyes, it's Sunday again. You got to come up with something new to say. Yeah. And as a result, many pastors have a very wide expertise, all these different, uh, different topics that they've preached on over the years, but it's not necessarily deep. And uh, it may sound counterintuitive, but the more niche your, your message is, the easier it is to package it, build a brand about it, around it, and, and turn it into products, right? So John Maxwell is known for leadership. Dave Ramsey is known for finance, right? What is your lane? Mm. And uh, it has a lot to do with identity. Who does God say that you are? And why do you exist? And you know, Jesus had a lot of clarity he said, you know, for this reason, I was made manifest. For this purpose, I was made manifest. He knew exactly why he existed, what he had to offer, and, and, and the impact that he could bring through the message that he had been given. So, so what is your, for this reason, I was made manifest? What is that reason? What is your lane? What is your message? Because you can build a brand around that 
very, very easily. If you don't know who you are, it makes it very hard to effectively uh, turn a message into impact because, you know, yeah, we all have something specific. And all, uh, I call the unique value proposition that God has deposited on the inside of us. It's ours. Nobody else can bring it to the table. Uh, I refer often to a scripture from Isaiah 49, for behold, I will do a new thing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, forget the former things of old. I used to think one day we'll wake up and God surprises all by doing something new. And I've come to believe over the years that it's a lot simpler than that. Because if we truly believe that God created us to be unique and we become that, we automatically produce something new through our life ministry. And, and so for that reason, identifying who you are, what your message is, has a lot to do with the identity that God deposited inside of us. And if we become that, automatically we have this unfair advantage that knows no competition with anything else around us because by definition it's unique. So yeah, it becomes the foundation about everything that I do. If you don't know who you are, it becomes very hard to uh, package a message effectively. So that's where I always start. Like, who are you? You know, I literally sit down with leaders and, and I ask them, who are you? And I need more than, you know, I have the desire to help people reach their full potential because hopefully everybody has that. Like specifically, what is your message? Who are you? What is the identity and the unique value proposition that God has deposited inside of you? So we can effectively capitalize on that unfair advantage that nobody else possesses. Uh, so that's a coaching process. I work a lot with people one-on-one, uh, -on -one, trying to pull that out of them. A lot of it has to do with asking the right questions and putting language to oftentimes what they already know. But it's something, you know, sometimes you know something, but you don't have the language to define and articulate that. And we help with that and start building a brand around that. Yeah, I found it very valuable going through your coaching process because that was a very hard task to really yeah. find my lane and my messaging. You know, I had that big picture idea, but when I went to granular where I was starting to being challenged, <laughs> asked the questions, I had the answer within me, but it took a while to get it out of me. And once you're able to really unpack and identify what your message is, it's yeah. it's really transformational and it's it's all positive from there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um in the book once you've identified your message you present a lot of different ideas on how to uh package your message so what are some of the ways that you've identified that uh people can package their message yeah in working with a lot of leaders they they subconsciously condition themselves to two formats predominantly mm -hmm. they either deliver a keynote or preach a sermon and then you know those that are disciplined enough they might write a book and publish that and those are the two formats that are the most common to package your uh, message into those formats um, from an economic point of view those are probably not the most beneficial formats because a sermon is free a keynote is like a, a usually a fixed amount. You know, sometimes honorariums can be uh, substantial, but oftentimes there's also very limited. Mm -hmm. And then a book doesn't sell for more than 20 bucks, right? And doesn't matter how trans life transforming the message of that book is, you can read it, learn from it, apply the principles. Now my life is transformed. So in other words, it's invaluable. However, the perceived value I attach to that book is not more than 20 bucks because, you know, it's a book. Mm -hmm. So I've learned that, yeah, people read, they listen, they watch, they participate, they attend. These are all different vehicles that I can utilize to package information. So the 20 or the 12 chapter book turned into a 12 week coaching experience uh, makes the difference potentially between $20 and $1,000. And it's the same information it's just put into a different format that has a higher perceived value to it. So we're always looking at, okay, how can we develop a product portfolio around the message as opposed to just a book or just a keynote? 
and 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 where we can engage the audience that we're trying to reach with something free, something cheap, something more expensive, something uh, expensive, something exclusive, and then systematically, intentionally move them up that ladder of financial engagement with that message, so that what they start with free with turns into potentially something very lucrative as they engage with you and your message. So, you know, books, masterclasses, events, coaching processes, subscription programs, you name it. What else can you do with that message to put it in formats that will, first of all, serve a wider audience because not everybody likes to read, yeah. right? So we recorded your audio book. Um, there's people that will never flip through the pages. They just listen to it mm -hmm. because they prefer it. So putting it in different formats reaches a wider audience, uh, which from a missional point of view is what we want, but also on an economic um, level, if we have two, three, four derivatives around that same message that people can engage with, the average dollar amount that you make per customer goes significantly up. So it's just, again, comes on to stewardship again. Mm -hmm. How can you reach more people and how can you generate more revenues out of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd like to to take some time to share what the some of the offerings that Four Rivers Media has because uh, your your group has really helped me package. I guess I would call my first message, uh, which is you know in this book, Navigation Discovery. You guys really helped me package this uh, in several different ways, and so and I'm already working on my second message. I would call it with with your group. Uh, so what are what are some of the offerings yeah. that Four Rivers Media offers? Yeah, so, you know, it, it breaks down into two areas. It's product development and then go to market strategy. So product development is, okay, let's think beyond the book. It's not about the book. It's all about the message. How can we turn it into different formats? If I go through the trouble of, you know, putting time, energy, and money into writing and publishing a book, I might as well do two, three other things as derivatives around that same message that I can sell. So we help architect basically what, what your product portfolio is gonna look like based on your message. And that can go all the way from an idea or you, know, you wanna write a book or put a message in the market and um, you haven't started writing yet. So what we did is what we did with you actually, mm -hmm. is we attach you to a writing coach who starts developing kind of like a project plan based on the variables that you have in your life, how you're wired, how you prefer to work, the time commitment that you can give. That person starts developing this, uh, this timeline and this uh, project plan, and that becomes a framework for accountability. It is sets you up for success and ensures that you make the progress that you tell us you wanna make within a set number of weeks or months or however, uh, whatever you prefer and produce that manuscript. Some people come to us, they already have a manuscript, but it's raw, it, it needs some work. So our team can take it from there, turn it into a book, turn it into curriculum, turn it into a video course, turn it into you know, a, a membership of sorts where people join, uh, turn it into an event. So anything that has to do with products, develop of a message, we do. And then once we have that, we develop strategy on how to help you, the author, uh, the leader, the influencer, bring that message to market. So marketing question is probably one of the top questions I ever get. Okay, now that I have a book, now that I have a product, you know, how do we get people to buy it? And I always answer it this way. And I've learned this over the years that there's no such thing as a magic wand or a silver bullet that lives outside of your ecosystem that brings you the success you desire. Um, but I talk about the disciples fishing all night. You know that story. They catch nothing. They're tired. It's early morning. They want to go to bed. And, and then there's Jesus. Hey, guys, before you go, throw your nets the other side. And we all know the story. They go from complete lack to total abundance where they can hardly manage 
the success of that last attempt of trying to catch some fish. So one day I asked myself, okay, what made the difference? How did they go from lack to abundance? How did they go from failure to success? What changed? And I had to come to the conclusion that nothing really changed. It was the same lake. They didn't say, hey, let's haul in the trailer, get the boat out of the water, find another lake, too many fishermen here, no fish left. You know, they didn't come up with that excuse. They didn't uh, say, hey, our equipment is broken. We got to, we got to, it's outdated. We don't have radar like the other fishermen do. You know, they use the same equipment. They had the same education. They didn't say, hey, let's go to school, get a degree, try again. They had the same partnerships, the guys in the boat, uh, you know, their friends, their buddies. They didn't go look for other partners. They, they didn't go to Shark Tank and get Mark Cuban to invest and, Maybe that would give them success. Everything was the same. The only thing that changed was how strategy was applied to what already existed in that world. And I think that's a very powerful kingdom-based marketing principle that uh, we can learn from. And what we can learn boils down to you already have what it takes to be successful within a hand's reach. Because God would never set you up for failure. He wouldn't give you a message if he didn't think there was a market already that needed it. So what is, what is it that I already have that I can leverage for multiplication? So trying to figure that out, trying to identify the opportunities that may be sitting dormant in your life and in your sphere of influence that we can activate and apply strategy to. So those are kind of the two things that we do. Uh, help develop a product portfolio and then help you through the process of setting you up for success so that you can actually connect that message to the people that God had in mind when he gave you that message. Mm. Yeah, one thing I realized, uh, collaborate, collaborating over the last, I would say, six to eight months with other authors that have published through <clears throat> Four Rivers Media, it's, uh, there's not one, like you mentioned, there's not one cookie cutter go to market. Everything. No each and every person had a different process that worked for them. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, it was awesome to go through that process and collaborate with others as well. Yeah. 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 And the process is ongoing, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's not like you try this for two weeks and then you don't do nothing. It's like, what, what can we accomplish with this over the course of the next decade? Mm -hmm. And what can I do every day to move the needle, to get it to more people? And it's just a different mindset than the mindset that's traditionally uh, with traditional publishers. That's typically like, oh, let's give it two weeks, see if it gets any traction. If not, we'll move on. Uh, we say, hey, this message is just as potent tomorrow as it was yesterday. Like, what else can we do yeah. to reach more people? Yeah, one of the things I really enjoy through the process is uh, Four Rivers Media was a true partner in it. They truly believed yeah. in the message and they were a true champion throughout the whole process. It wasn't just, yeah. you know, your traditional publishing company. It was uh, truly a partner and a friend that came alongside yeah. you. You keep, you keep saying was, but we still are. Oh yeah, you still are. You still are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you still are. But you know, the, there's probably a few listening out, out there listening to this podcast that they feel they're not worthy to write a message or write a book. They have a message in them, but you know, I'm a nobody. And why, why should I even take the effort to, to write something? Yeah. Um, what encouragement do you have for, for those, those people? Yeah. I mean, first of all, we're all nobodies, right? We are born nobodies. <laughs> nobody's <laughs> heard of us when we're born, um, <laughs> but God has potential sees potential in all of us. I remember a distinct conversation that I had with, with a pretty prominent bishop at one point where we went through coaching process and he got so overwhelmed with everything really that we're talking about here. And he called me the next day and said, man, does anybody even care? Is this even going to work? Do I even have what it takes? Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, if I mention the name of this person, you probably know him. And, and he became really insecure about, you know, his message and, and, and whether or not 
there was anything viable there. So I asked him one question. I said, did God give you a message? And he says, yes. I said, the fact that God gave you a message is the evidence that you have what it takes. Why? Because you are God's second choice. God never picks the messenger first. He always picks the audience first. And, and th that principle I learned through the whole story of Moses, right? Moses was God's second choice. And the fact that Moses had a message was the evidence that the audience was already there. Because God heard the cry of the people in Egypt. It came up to his throne room. He heard it. He acknowledged it, decided to do something about it. And then, and only then, he went to look for a messenger that he could trust, that he could use to deliver the people. So the fact that Moses had a message was the evidence that the audience already existed. And again, I think that's a powerful principle that uh, we can learn from that, yeah, we have what it takes. And yes, people are going to care because why in the world would God give us a message if he didn't already have people in mind? Now, sure, Moses was in the backside of the desert. And mm -hmm. the key was, how do you get from there to there to connect to the people, right? So there's a process to it. But to be insecure about the message that I have uh, really is, is, and I understand why we are, but on a very logical level it's foolish to to be insecure about it because if you know that god gave you something the last thing you should do is worry about whether or not you have what it takes mm -hmm. so yeah so forever that's worth maybe somebody's listening is like you know what it's a good point i'm gonna do it um but that's what i learned over the years and uh, you can be confident that you have what it takes to be successful in what god's given you Mm. that's so true that's so true yeah i hope those are listening that are a bit encouraged that you know every each and every person has a unique message just like martine mentioned and uh it's a god-given message and so it's 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 time to get it out there and if you're thinking of it uh, before rivers media is a good outlet to help us and assist package that message yeah. um but one of the things I wanted to touch on is in the book, you talk a lot about sales and marketing, and I know you yeah. go into a lot of details and specifics on it, uh, kind of from your perspective and, and your journey. Um, but what are some of the mistakes that you see people do when it comes to sales and marketing, when it comes to putting out their message? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, I can tell so many things um, that I've learned uh, through trial and error and see people do it. But let me, let me think about my, my top things. Yeah. First of all, you know, people develop product in isolation, mm. you know, in other words, uh, here's my book. It kind of lives on its own. However, that book is an expression of who you are and what you carry in context of probably a ton of other things. So first of all, like I said, it's not about the book. It's not about the products, all about the message. That message is part of your brand, for lack of a better word. And your brand is more like an ecosystem, not a product. And that book lives in your ecosystem, but it's connected to everything else in your world. So I'm a big believer that when you put time, energy, and money into one thing that lives in your ecosystem, it might as well positively benefit everything else. You know, so many people put time, energy, and money in a tunnel vision mindset where it's all about the book. And maybe that book gains some momentum, but everything else uh, is not touched by that. So you want your book to positively impact your speaking career, your coaching career, whatever else it is you're mm -hmm. doing. And, and focusing on just one aspect in isolation, it's like trying to raise the water level of the lake in the middle of the lake. It's not a sustainable thing. You want the water level to raise ac across the board. So creating connections, connecting the dots of everything else that lives in your world so that everything else benefits from what you do over here or what you do over here. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And then, you know, we teach people, and I don't talk about that in my book that kind of became a, a, a discovery later on after I wrote it but we call it the three P's. You need 
Ne so basically never show up without a strategy. Never go to war without a strategy. When you show up, you got to have the three P's in place. And people don't show up at the three P's. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen. Uh, you know, people show up in a place where they have the attention of the people they're trying to reach and they don't have a strategy in place. And the strategy is the three P's. First P is your product offer. So your product offer goes beyond just the book. What else? What are the two or three other things that we can tag on to that product offer? So, you know, the most basic form is a book, study guide, video course, audio book. So now we have four options to purchase and to offer to people as they engage with my product offer. So now instead of making $20 in a book, I'm making, you know, on average $48 because some people will say yes to the study guide. Some people say yes to the audio book and so on. So how do I create an offer that's irresistible and uh, offers you the best chance of engaging people into these derivatives that you're offering in the process? So your product offer, then your pitch. How can I pitch something that your, your language, your narrative, how you frame the product offer? So how can I take the audience that's in front of me and verbally take them through that product offer so that by the time you're done and say, buy now, uh, they're most likely to say yes to that offer. Make it irresistible. Now, you just tweak your pitch all the time as you learn. But there's principles that I talk about in the book that help you develop the perfect pitch that sets you up for the best chance of getting people to buy a product, essentially. But then the third part, which arguably, maybe not the most important part, equally important, is the process. What process has in, do you have in place to practically take the transaction and, and collect the money, but also deliver the product that people just bought? So many times we just sell books from the book table in the back when we're done speaking at a conference. And but how do you sell your audio book there? How do you deliver your video course effectively from a book table? So you have to have a process in place to capture the people in the room and take them through the transaction itself and seamlessly deliver the product they just purchased both digitally and physically. Um, you can have the best product offer and the best pitch, but there is no process in place to actually make that transaction in a seamless, frictionless way, uh, you're still not going to get any sales. So those three things are things we're always looking at as we're working with clients. And the mistake that I've seen is people now have wonderful product and they show up without a strategy and having those three Ps in place. Mm -hmm. And the net result of that is zero. You know, I remember um, I had a client, again, pretty prominent name, he was going to be on a platform that was quite substantial. They were streaming to millions of people online. And I remember he showed up and I could tell because I was watching the live stream that he had put no thought in those three Ps. And he talked about his book and it was great. And then it became time for the call to action. And it was like, uh, I, think, I think there's an ad in this magazine somewhere on how you can get it. Like, first of all, those people online can't see the magazine. <laughs> Second of all, like that's no call to action because you got to get people into a process that pushes them to that point of sale of the main book, but then also those derivative products. So, yeah, those are a couple of examples. Yeah, that's so true because just through attending your events, Martin, that you and uh, and the team have put on, I've learned strategies just from that. Uh, I remember one strategy that I used was a simple QR code. It was an aviation speaking event. And I was yep. just like, let me throw this at the last slide with my contact info. It had a QR code. And I briefly said, oh, yeah, I just wrote a book. And if you're interested in a copy, there's a QR code. Phones went up instantly. Yes. Phones went yeah. up and literally half the room purchased the book. Uh, yeah. of, I think it was like a group of like maybe 150 to 200 people and half the room purchased the book. Um, so it truly can make a difference, but one of the mistakes I think people often make, and I know I've done this as well. Uh, and I think you touch on it in your book too, is the selling versus adding value. Absolutely. Yeah. And what, what are your 
Can you provide some insights on that? Yeah, you know, there's a way that you can make your offer so magnetic that people start pursuing you for what you got as opposed to you chasing them down to make a quick sale. Uh, so many people feel like they need to pitch, 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 pitch to try to make that sale because it's now or never. There's the only chance I got. And and I think the opposite is true. If you lead with value, you're subconsciously bringing people to a place where they desire more of what you got. So uh, the purest form of marketing, in my opinion, is to lead with free value. And in the process of giving away free value, people start pursuing you for more of what, where that came from. So, um, you know, if you can answer people's questions, solve their problems, uh, inspire them, uh, three things happen. Trust goes up, trust yeah. in you as the expert, right? Desire goes up desire for more where that came from what else do you got that can help me and then uh confidence like your content's actually is still in confidence in them to the point where they feel like they can actually do this thing as it relates to the subject matter of your content so um i always say hey listen if you're in front of people always give away something for free first before mm -hmm. you ask for something back because when trust is high, confidence high, desire is high, the sale of what it is you have to offer uh, merely becomes the byproduct of that process. Mm. So, you know, that could be a lot of different things. In many cases, uh, we've actually given away the book for free yeah. because the only reason why you can't give a book for free is if you don't have anything to sell beyond the book. Mm -hmm. Again, tunnel vision, it's just about the book that doesn't work. Uh, so many publishers and published authors, they can't afford to give away the book for free because there's nothing else to monetize. So if you have three, four other things in place that you could monetize, that book becomes the lost leader in the process. Yeah. Um, and it's fine to lose 10 bucks in the front end because you know you're going to make 100 on the back end, only now more at scale because it's a lot easier to engage people in something free than it is to ask them for money yeah. you know you sell something at a regular price your demand is low you discount mm -hmm. it it goes up you make it free you're maximizing the demand or what we call the top of the funnel mm -hmm. so if you know that for every 10 people that you give away something free for you're going to make 100 bucks right then suddenly you know how, how do i want to make 200 bucks well give away more free stuff yeah. So uh, it's a whole different yet counterintuitive way of thinking, um, but it works. You lead with free, you add value, you add value. People start connecting and relating to you as somebody that gives more than asks. And as a result, you're actually going to make more sales. Mm -hmm. Now, I still need to be intentional with the ask at some point in a relationship. Um, but you want people to be, become part of your world, your ecosystem. They now live in it as opposed to, you know, try them to swipe their card or your square read in the back of the room. Yeah. Uh, which is short term thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I hope uh, th those are listening. Something is stirring within you that you're, you're getting some ideas and getting some encouragement from just listening to Martijn. Um, so before we kind of conclude Martijn and, and uh, get people to, uh, get a copy of the book. I wanted to touch on Avail. If you can tell us a little bit about what Avail is all about. Yeah, Avail tagline is the art of leadership. And we're all about developing leaders and creating content for leaders in different formats that will help leaders become better leaders. Uh, Avail was created in collaboration with Dr. Sam Chan. Many of you might know Sam. Uh, he is a true leadership guru and has become a very close friend over the years. And uh, we stuck our heads together. We said, hey, how can we build a brand that's bigger than Sam, that serves leaders, but also creates a platform for other leaders to be part of. And as a result, we uh, created this brand. We put out a magazine every quarter. We put out a book every month. We put out curriculum every month. We put out video course every month. We do events, podcasts, you name it. And we push content out across all platforms. So when you go to the artofleadership.com, 
you kind of see everything that we do. If you want to get a, a trial subscription for six months, uh, you don't have to pay anything for six months. We'll uh, send you the magazine for six months. You go to availjournal.com and you can uh, get access to that offer. Uh, but it's premium, premium leadership content from some of the world's leader, leading voices that you know will add a lot of value to, to you. Yeah, and for those listening, um, there will be a link in the podcast description so you can check out uh, the Art of Leadership website and avail. And uh, they also have a monthly subscription where you get um, a book in the mail every month. And um, yeah, I'm I'm an avid subscriber of, of Avail, so I really enjoy the both the journal and the books that are sent uh, every month. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, and then uh, lastly, Martine, how can people get a copy of uh, your book, Unleashed? Yeah, so when you go to theartofleadership.com/unleashed, um, you'll come to a page. There's a video of me, and I'll share some things about five things I learned about the life of Moses the ultimate messenger of the Old Testament. So you can watch that if you like, but below that video is a button where you can claim a free copy of Unleashed. It'll take you through a series of questions. At the end of a series of questions, uh, you'll be redirected to a link where you can claim that free copy, either digitally or physically. We'll mail it to you. And that's how you get that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Martine, for being on the podcast. And, you know, I, I, I really like to take some time, you know, you've what you and the group have done and even Sam Chan is just add value, add value, add value to me in several different ways, both leadership, helping me package the message and really appreciate the partnership and, and overall friendship that, that we've had. Yeah, thank you. It's our pleasure. And we're uh, excited to be connected, Cameron. Yeah, thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Martine. Uh, I know Martine mentioned uh, several resources um, with Avail and the magazine and how you can get a copy of his book. Uh, if you want to go to theartofleadership.com, and if you're driving, that link is in the podcast description uh, on whichever streaming platform that you're listening on, theartofleadership.com. And there you can um, get a copy of Martine's book, Unleashed, How to Turn Your Message into Impact. You can also try out a free subscription to the Avail Journal. And also, I'll drop a link to Martine's personal website where you can connect with him if you have any uh, questions about messaging, questions about publishing a book, getting author coaching, or if you have a manuscript ready. Um, they are Four Rivers Media and Martine's group is an awesome organization to work with and truly partner with as they come along uh, with your message and help you uh, in what whichever aspect that you need help in. And so also, if you want to get a copy of my book, if you haven't gotten a copy of my book, uh, I am in the final stages of publishing my second book, which hopefully will come out this winter. And so if you want to get a copy of my first book, Navigation and Discovery, A Path of Navigating and Discovering Through Your Journey of Faith, you can go to CameronSing.com. Again, CameronSing.com and right there on the homepage, you'll see a link to purchase the book in any format that you would like, whether it's a digital copy, a PDF, audiobook, Kindle, uh, any format that you would like. And if you would like to gift this copy to people that need to hear this message, uh, people that you think would would very cherish this message, young person, a student, an emerging leader, young leader, young professional, uh, someone in high school, someone in that's about to graduate high school, um, teenager, young person, uh, this message is applicable for anyone and everyone. Uh, on navigating and discovering through the journey of faith and so I talk about a little bit about my experience navigating through high school growing up a little bit and also going through college and how my trials and tribulations uh, how I went through that to find really um, my purpose and how faith has been a part of my life even when times when I felt like faith wasn't and so 
you can go to CameronSing.com and that link is in the podcast description and um, you can either purchase a copy for yourself or um, gift a copy to someone that needs to hear the message of navigation and discovery. Also, um, don't forget to subscribe on whichever platform that you're listening on so that you receive the notification when the next podcast goes live, podcast episode goes live. And also go back and take a look at some of the previous episodes as well. We are on episode 23 and we are on a mission to do about two podcasts a week at least for the next couple months. Uh, We have some awesome people coming our way and uh, some people from all different backgrounds and all different parts of the world. So really hope this is adding value to your journey of life wherever you're at. And also, don't forget to give a rating on whichever platform that you're listening on. I would greatly appreciate it. That would help get the message of this podcast out to a broader audience. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode.